Hello, my friends. I'm Gene Della Sala. I'm president of Audioholics, and today we have Hugo Rivera, vice president of marketing. Gene, how are you doing today? I'm feeling pretty pumped, man. We're doing some great topics, video coverage today, and we're going to do a very important one that people have been asking us about. Yeah, let's talk about cables. What's the best cable to use? You know. Well. You know, people always ask me, what speaker cable should I use? Mm -hmm. What matters in speaker cables? And of course, there's a lot of myths and a lot of snake oils out there that we love to, of course, debunk. Yeah, absolutely. So today I want to focus on the most important metric in speaker cables, and that is resistance. When the Borg say resistance is futile, they really mean it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because you're dealing, when you're dealing with connecting a speaker to an amplifier, a speaker is a low impedance, mm -hmm. uh, okay? and an amplifier has a very low output impedance. Right. So the most dominant metric you're dealing with is resistance. I mean, the inductance and capacitance, all that stuff matters too, to some extent, but the bottom line is resistance. Okay. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about cable gauge. Yes. Okay, cable gauge is basically a measurement of the cross-sectional area of a conductor. And the odd thing about cable gauge is the lower the gauge, the thicker the cable, mm -hmm. okay? So anytime you go from one gauge of cable, let's say you go from 13 gauge cable mm -hmm. or 14 gauge cable down to 10 or 11 gauge, every time you drop three gauge, you have the resistance. Right. So just remember that because that's an important fact. Mm -hmm. Now you get some of these esoteric companies that say, oh, solid core conductors are better because it lacks strand jumping, which of course strand jumping doesn't exist. <laughs> You know, we've talked about that. There's no such thing as diode rectification in a, in a wire. It can't produce harmonic distortion. We have articles, measurements, everything on that. That's covered. But let's talk about solid core versus stranded. Mm -hmm. In actuality, if you look at our article we did on skin effect, and we'll talk about skin effect in, mm -hmm. in a little while, solid core conductors are actually less ideal than stranded. Solid core, first of all, is less flexible, mm -hmm. so it's harder to work with. Yeah. Solid core actually exhibits more skin effect tendency than stranded because even though stranded cable, it's not a true Litz cable where each strand is, is separated by an insulator, mm -hmm. it does exhibit Litz-like behavior. And while we've calculated the skin effect rise at, at 20 kilohertz to go up 20% on a solid core cable, mm -hmm. it actually only goes up about three or 4% on a um, stranded cable of the same gauge. Right. And that's in our article. You can see our measurements on that. So it's pretty incredible because in actuality, you want to stick with stranded cable if you can, because people that are worried about skin effect are mostly buying these solid core cables. They could be doing themselves more of a disservice mm -hmm. than they're doing a benefit. And you know, Gene, before we continue, for the neophytes out there, uh, could you please define what skin effect is? Yeah, skin effect is basically, uh, it's a measurement of how the AC resistance changes of a cable versus frequency, because as the frequency goes up, the current flows more on the surface of the conductor. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people won't even tell you this, the internal inductance actually drops. And you can see this when you measure the series um, inductance of a cable. So in some, in some aspects, that's a little bit of a benefit of it. But here's the thing, we've measured cables that have had less skin effect, okay? Mm -hmm. Like uh, these high-end esoteric cables. Yeah, and they do show you a flatter um, inductance profile up to 100 kilohertz, mm -hmm. but the problem is they're basic DC resistance is much higher than standard 12K zip, zip cord like we have here. So in actuality, you have more impedance loss, more insertion loss from the, the uh, skin effect free cable than mm -hmm. you do from the basic Home Depot cable that has low resistance to begin <laughs> with. So right. we should probably talk about insertion loss. Yeah, exactly. Insertion loss is basically a measurement of how much power loss you're gonna get as a result of resistance. Again, you know, you take a voltage divider, if you have an eight ohm speaker and you have a one ohm um, resistance in the cable, you're gonna lose a good percentage of your power based on the, the one ohm resistance in the cable. And right. we have this in our article you could check out. So, you know, it's important to maintain low insertion loss and use low resistance cables. Right, right. Now, well, you know what, Gene? One question that some people may, are asking, you know, it's about, for example, monster cables, they go ahead and produce these <laughs> cables with these gold-plated connectors, right? Yeah, yeah. They claim this is incredible, you know, this is going to help uh, your system tremendously. What is your take on this? You know, I went to a monster demo at CES many years ago, and I always go to the demos because I like to see what kind of trickery that they... they <laughs> okay. They, 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 it really is trickery because to the average consumer, you look at these demos, they have, they have their light bulb demo. All they right. show you the Monster Brand cable here and Brand X over here. You press the button, 
the the button uh, for the Brand X and they and the bulb is like you know half as bright as the Monster Cable one. Oh my God, there's a difference. The bulb right. is brighter than Monster Cable. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I got a peek behind their behind their uh, their little magic behind setup their, behind their curtain. It's like the, <laughs> it's like the Wizard of Oz curtain. I got a peek behind their curtain, and their cable was 12 gauge cable. Brand X was 18 gauge cable. Oops. So okay. of course, Brand X has more resistance, hence more insertion loss, hence more power loss. <sighs> Why the, the Monster Cable perform better? Right. Now, had they done a equivalent comparison of Brand X being the same gauge as theirs, the light bulb would have been the same brightness, assuming both cables had the same length of conductors. Wow. So okay. take that with a grain of salt, my friends. That's a huge eye opener right there. Again, AC resistance, I mean, uh, cable resistance is the dominant metric there. You know, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about different color, uh, quality conductors and materials. Or... Well, you know, what? If, if I'm somebody that's buying some cables, what would you recommend me to get? You know, again, look at our tables. What I did was I came up with a chart based on cable gauge and I calculated insertion loss for eight ohm loads and four ohm loads. And you can look at it. So if you're running, I don't remember exactly all the specifications, but what I did was I assumed that if you want the most utmost fidelity, you want less than two tenths of a dB loss at 20 kilohertz. Okay. Most people can't hear that. Most people, the sensitivity is really in the mid range. You could hear maybe two tenths of a dB loss at two kilohertz, mm -hmm. but not necessarily, most people can't even hear 20 kilohertz. So this is a very conservative table. And uh, you know, if you look at the table, it'll tell you to use this, gauge of cable based on your speaker impedance and based on the length nice. that you're using. Okay. So the other thing too is I also calculated damping factor, which is a which is a ratio of the impedance, the output impedance to the source impedance. And you really want a damping factor. Damping factor gets blown out of the water just like contrast <laughs> ratios do on TVs. But inc incidentally, if you work out the insertion loss to be less than two tenths of a dB, the damping factor has to be greater than 50. And that's a usual good guideline. You don't want to go with a damping factor much lower than, you know, really 20 or 30, but 50 is a good guideline when you're dealing with speaker connected to the amp. So look at our chart. You could put that up on the video. Yeah. But, you know, cable is so cheap these days. I would never recommend, if you're really doing high fidelity, I would use at least 12 gauge. You know, I wouldn't go to like 18 gauge. I mean, we have, this is like 16 gauge conductor here. It's pretty thin, junky stuff. I mean, it's, it serves its purpose for short distances. Mm -hmm. This is 12 gauge, okay? I use 10 gauge, which is lower resistance. It has like three milliohms per foot of loop resistance, which is really low, okay? Um, my favorite cable, to be honest with you, is 14.4, because it's four conductor, 14 gauge. When you parallel them up, it gives you an equivalent um, gauge of 11, which is close to the resistance of a 10 gauge cable. And you've got a redundant pair of connectors in case one of them break. Nice. So we nice. always recommend 14.4 if you can. It's a little bit harder to work with and terminate. But you know, if this is high fidelity, go with the 14.4. If it's for your surrounds, you definitely want to go with, if you can, with the lower gauge because you've got longer runs of cable. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, I run cable. I have a separate surround system in a different bedroom and the cable runs are 60 feet. Mm -hmm. I ran 10 gauge through the walls. Right, right. So you cut your resistance down. Exactly. And you know, think about that too. If you have a four ohm speaker, now you need a cable that's half the resistance. Mm -hmm as opposed to an eight ohm speaker. Right. So really, again, folks, at the end of the day, you know, it's nice to have low inductance, it's nice to have pretty cables, but look at the resistance. If, if you're not getting at least the resistance of a 12 or 10 gauge cable, don't waste your money on these exotic cables. A lot of these exotic cables promise you the moon and they give you cheese. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the bottom line, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, and definitely run away if the company's, you know, saying that they have to cryogenically freeze your <laughs> or cable. Or put a battery on the cable. <laughs> or battery. We've, we've covered that topic to death. Yeah. Or elevate your cables. It's like they put them on elevators. Yeah, or any other sort of religious ceremony like that. Yeah. You, know? you know, we're not, we're not a, a faith-based organization here. We're based on <laughs> science and, you know, we don't pray to our cables. You shouldn't pray to your cables either. You know, what you do in your home, in your privacy is your business, but in reality, Let's deal with some science here because it's a piece of wire. Yeah. Okay. There's not 
a lot of mystery there. It's not rocket science. No, I mean, the pieces of wire, this is just based on proven science that has been tested over years and years. For, since Faraday. I mean, <laughs> I I mean come on, guys. <laughs> I mean, the, the, everywhere else in every industry, it's, a, it's an established science. There's no if ends or bots or you know no BS, but it's only in consumer audio where they come up with these wild theories, the esoteric science, to try to sell you something that <laughs> you know to differentiate themselves. Right, absolutely. So go with the low gauge, low resistance cables as low as you can handle, as low as you can terminate, and as low as you can fit. And if you're doing it in drywall behind drywall, use CL2 cable, CL2 approved, fire retardant. Yes, of course. Awesome. Great advice, Gene. With that said, I think uh, I'll just invite our people to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Comment below, let us know what you think, what kind of cables you're using. And uh, certainly, feel free to share this video with your friends. Yeah, what, ga what cable gauge are you using? Let us know. Yeah, that's a good question. Awesome. Well, with that said, until next time, keep, keep listening. listening. That's great. <laughs> promise you the moon and give you cheese. I love How did I even come out with that? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I surprised myself. <laughs>